Hello, welcome to GDQ Hot Fix. I am Nika Sor and it has been an eventful day so far, I would say, and we're gonna keep that going. Did you know it has been 18 years since Luigi's Mansion was released? Like today, like on this particular day, exactly. What? So of course we are going to celebrate this with a four-way 100% race of Luigi's Mansion. Joining us are the racers, HD Lax, Blue Hits, Fire Dragon, and Michael Toop. They are going to be racing in the background, but for the commentary, we have Lacey and Skazi with us. Wow, welcome to the stream, everybody. Hi, hello. Hello, hi. Hello, hello. Uh, are you excited? Are we ready to get started? Oh, we're ready to get started. Very excited. I've never felt more exhilarated than in this very moment. <laughs> okay, let me start doing a countdown. Uh, oh, God, typing and doing countdown at the same time is going to be crazy. Okay. And five, oops, oops, five. <laughs> All right, they should be started. All right. Sorry, we, we didn't go. do the five, four, three, two, one because I was typing it at the same time. This is all sorts of crazy. <laughs> you just, yeah, that's okay. You sent the first number, and that's enough. People can do the rest in their heads. It's just silence. How very exciting. Yeah. Well, it adds to the ambience and the spookiness of Luigi's Mansion. Absolutely. So, uh, the, the beginning of this run, you're probably going to see some different strats here from each runner's, uh, because they're going to be collecting money as they're catching the ghosts. And there's a lot of different ways that you can do that, but basically they're going to try to collect all the money in between when the ghosts appear because there's like a three second cooldown after you catch a ghost in this game before the next ghost in a room will appear. So you'll see some interesting strats here to sort of multitask. For sure, and generally speaking, Area 1, everyone's pretty much going to do it the same, but later on there are a couple of different uh, places, and I think actually even in like the wardrobe room and stuff, there are some different places where people can choose to get ghosts that have money in them, but generally everyone's going to kind of keep the same route, so we should have a pretty clear idea as to who is in the lead for the beginning of this run. Yeah, so the interesting thing about Luigi's Mansion 100% is that you have to get 100 million gold. And so there isn't actually a specific route for the exact money that you get because a lot of the money spots are random. You won't get the same money from them every time you check them. So you can already see that the runners have different amounts of money based on which spots actually activated. And yeah, and... You can get either some money, you can get a gold bar in some of them, you can get a heart, which doesn't really apply to anything, you can get nothing, uh, and there's no real way to manipulate what you're going to get, so you sort of just want to hit all the objects and hope for the best. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of uh, cool strats that you can do to basically check as many spots as possible. So you see some of them getting this blue speedy spirit from that wardrobe. But uh, Michael choosing not to do it, and... Also, Fire Dragon choosing not to do it. So th that costs about two seconds to grab that guy. But you get a, a decent chunk of money. So it's it's interesting to see the, uh, the different choices that these runners are making already, just at the beginning of the run. And as they get further into the run, they need to be judging how good their money pace is. Because you don't actually get uh, very many chances to check how much money you have. After each area, the game will tell you. But you, you go through all of area four, basically just uh, guesstimating your money and keeping track of how much you get. And you want to get just enough that you have the 100 million gold, but you don't want to waste a bunch of time getting extra money. Yeah, that's one thing too, is you can go over the limit for sure, but that'll cost you a lot more time than trying to get as close to 100 million as you can without, you know, wasting time unnecessarily on getting arbitrary gems or anything that you really don't need to get. Exactly. And each time you collect a gem, you actually have to watch this animation of Luigi picking it up, and it, it takes quite a bit of time. So, some of these runners will likely be going for pearl dupes, um, you can duplicate pearls, and the large pearl 
from each portrait ghost is worth a million gold on its own. So if you can duplicate pearls, then you can take other gems out of your money route, and it's quite a bit faster. And also, duping the large pearl is beneficial if you have some sort of unfortunate accident and don't get 90 HP off of one of the portrait ghosts and get the first big pearl from them in the first place, because the portrait ghosts only drop big pearls if you get 90 HP in one go. So, you do have to make sure you're actually doing well on the ghost suckups as well, so you can maximize the money that they output. Yeah, so you actually get punished twice if you don't one cycle a ghost. You, you both lose time because you have to do another cycle, and you also lose the large pearl if you haven't gotten them down to 90 HP. So it's pretty brutal. You, you need to be very careful with the portrait ghost in this category. Suffice to say, you have to go fast. You have to go fast to go fast. Yeah, that's, that's you heard here first. In Luigi's Mansion, if you're not going fast, then unfortunately, you're not going fast. Now, all these gentlemen, though, these lovely gentlemen, they're all going fast. Yes, they're really fast. In fact, they're so fast I can barely keep up. So now they're fighting the first area boss. This is Chauncey. He's a baby and he's big. Yeah, as babies so often are. So they're going to be doing some strats here to try and catch the balls right out of the air. And there's very specific setups to do that. And in the sec second cycle, you're actually going to see them get hit by the rocking horse on purpose. And that's so that they can get invincibility frames and catch the ball out of the air again. Because in the second cycle, normally if you tried to catch it, it would just hit you. But you can abuse the invincibility frames. And, and it's also second. worth mentioning that they're deliberately getting him in two cycles and not one because it's actually not possible with the current information that we have to get Chauncey in one cycle. But if you keep him above 50 HP in the first cycle, then his second cycle takes less time as he only throws two sets of rocking horses and not three. Yep, exactly. So a lot of these small optimizations here, that's really what Luigi's Mansion is all about. There's a ton of nuance to the run. It's for sure. You might not even notice it half the time, but generally going through the game, there are so many minor optimizations, really tiny things that they have to do consistently to save tiny chunks of time throughout the run that accumulate into big time saves overall. And now we're watching a cutscene. Yeah, so after each area, you're going to get this cutscene where Luigi puts all the portrait ghosts that he collected into this ghost portrificationizer, as Eged calls it. And this is turning them back into portraits. Yes. It portrifications them, to be precise. And you'll also get to see the money count of each runner here. After each area, like I was saying, you get the money count. And so they only have these four times that they actually get to see what their money pace actually is. And the last one, obviously, they need to see 100 million as that number. Yes. Because they could get the fastest time that you've ever seen. But if they're under 100 million, then it does not count as 100%. So they do have to make sure that their money is as close to that as they can. So now these runners are heading into area two. Uh, first, they're going to go to the bathroom here and catch some grabber ghosts. Is a new type of ghost. They grab you, hence the name grabber ghosts. Yeah, so they do a setup here to double them where they get grabbed on purpose and then shake them off. You'll find that a lot of the rooms in this game are done in a way where you're sort of manipulate the ghosts to clump together as much as you can to get them in doubles or triples. And for the grabber goats, you can throw them behind you and accumulate a double that way. Yeah, and so now they're heading into the ballroom Shy Guys, which is super, super difficult to optimize. Uh, they're going to be trying to get three sets of doubles in a row. And the, the cycles for this are very uh, difficult. There's a lot of yes, different absolutely. things to keep in mind. I can't quite capture, like, quickly exactly how yeah, it, it's is, very just take difficult my to explain but i assure you getting the doubles is difficult in itself but optimizing the cycles for the shy guys is 
insane and almost impossible to know or to notice unless you know what you're looking for. And now they're gonna have some RNG to combat with the Whirlindas here, because these two ghosts will show their heart in one spot, but there's also a 50% chance that they might just not do that and show their heart 10 seconds later. Yeah, so half of the time you just have to just tank a 10 second time loss on these ghosts. They're pretty much the worst. Nobody likes them. Yeah, I mean, I like them, but... Do that's, you know? That's, that's, yeah, they're my favorite ghosts, Skazi. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bold statement there. Yeah, the floating whirlwinds are my favorite ghosts in Luigi's Mansion. You can quote me on that. So here's another speedy spirit that some of these runners are getting. Um, again, this is one where it loses just a few seconds to grab him, and it gives you a little bit of money. It's not a huge amount. So it's really just up to the runners whether they want that uh, extra couple bills. They also did a tiny trick called Poster Skip, where you can skip having to grab the uh, poster that you are meant to grab that is covering the button there, but you can actually grab it before you even move the wall back, which you can then do while you're waiting for the second wave of ghosts in that room to spawn in the first place, so you can sort of skip having to do that at all. So that's a little thing that they did. Yeah, and so now they're releasing all the booze. And uh, it's a common misconception that these boos are trapped. They're not trapped. They're actually hiding. Yeah, uh, it's so a very common released, misconception. But they're actually just spreading out to, uh, as they put it, scram. Yeah, you see, they were waiting for Luigi to release them, and they were asleep in there, but then they noticed that he had the poltergust on his back, and that set them into a panic, and so they fled. But that doesn't mean they were trapped. It just means that they were scared of the vacuum cleaner. And not Luigi, just the vacuum cleaner. Yeah, yeah, Luigi's really not that threatening. He tries. He does try, and you know what? I'm afraid of him. If I saw him in my house, I'd be kind of scared. So now we're going to go around collecting those boos that we just set free. Um, these boos hide in random positions in the room, so a lot of the skill for this run is finding those boos quickly based on the radar. You notice in the corner of each uh, of each person's gameplay, they have that little flashing light, and that tells you where the boo is. And it's very difficult to read it quickly and, and sort of optimize whatever RNG you happen to get each run. Yes. So, as Kazi said. It's really more uh, a matter of how well you can optimize what RNG you get than how much the RNG is inherently good. So you can get some really bad RNG, but if you know how to optimize it, you'll likely get a faster time than somebody who doesn't know how to optimize their RNG but happens to get really good RNG for the booze. Yeah, and, and also you can, uh, you can scan a mirror with your camera and that will teleport you back to the lobby. So that's what they're doing yes. there to save some movement time. And in some cases, that's faster than just walking back. In some cases, it's actually faster to save and quit and then reload the game. So there are quite a few different ways to get around the mansion quickly. Yeah, and um, the, the thing about that is that the animation of scanning the mirror takes a really long time. They do this crazy, like, swirling animation. It, it's very slow. <laughs> So yes. a lot of the times, even if you're pretty far from the lobby, it will actually still be faster to just walk. Yeah, for sure, especially depending on where you're meant to be going from the lobby as well. So after collecting so. these five boos, the runners are heading into the bathroom where Toad accidentally dropped a key in the toilet, and he wouldn't let I'm you in unless like... you got all the boos away. Just like myself, whenever I drop something in the toilet, my immediate reaction is to sit in the toilet or to sit next to the toilet and cry about it and not take it out of the toilet. So I'm glad that there is an accurate representation of how I handle my situation. <laughs> I'm with you there. Hi, I forgot you were here. I know, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any insightful Luigi's Mansion themed commentary to add? Oh no, I just love listening to you too. Thank you. I love having someone listen to me. 
Look at you two. Look at you, Sazer. You're included too. We're all friends here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so they're doing some more uh, grabber setups here, trying to get doubles. It's two singles and then two doubles in this room. And yeah, then, uh, and these grabbers are invisible. Seeing, as, as Lacey was just talking about, you're going to be seeing a save and quit out of this room. Yes, but it's also one that requires you to get the fire medallion. Um, basically, when you get the fire medallion, Egan is meant to tell you all about how it works, and it's a really long, annoying line of text, and then you have to do a puzzle to leave the room. Um, but you can actually just grab the medallion, use the buoy you just caught to save and quit, and skip that entire situation altogether. And on top of that, there's actually a butler ghost that you have to get in a soon coming part of the mansion that walks around the uh, hallway and his positioning can sort of be anywhere because it's dependent on like really just arbitrary time it's not necessarily rng but it is pretty random however if you save and quit you can almost guarantee you get really good placement for him every single time as well yeah exactly and uh so when they're lighting these candles, they have to be very careful about their movement because any time loss in, you know, just lighting those candles actually gets like doubled or tripled. You actually lose a ton of time just from little movement mistakes because you're on the butler cycle here. So if you let him move further down the hallway, he also has to come back and you're waiting on him to sit down in his room. So. It's, uh, it's, it's very important that you go very, very fast there because the butler is basically guaranteeing exactly how slow you're going to be. So yeah, they're going to be clearing laundry room here as they wait for the butler. And uh, based on how quickly they do this entire segment and, and how good their butler cycle was and all that sort of stuff, they have to basically decide whether they're going to open that chest and get the money out of it, whether they're going to scan the mouse hole that they need to go through afterwards, or just uh, abandon that all and make sure that they get the butler in time. Because if you let him yeah. sit for too long, he'll despawn and go all the way back to the hallway. It loses like a minute and a half minimum. It's a really huge error, so you got to be very careful with them. It's one the of those things where you can get if you get a really really good butler cycle that actually is slightly detrimental because then you have less time to optimize your opening of the chest and scanning of the mouse hole and all that so you really have to make sure you do everything as fast as you can also going through that mouse hole skips getting the text box for the boo if you catch the boo as you're going through it but that only happens in the japanese versions that was patched out in all of the other versions yeah, so that's why these runners are on the Japanese version, as well as the fact that the text is a little bit shorter overall. So Japanese saves about half a minute in this category. And we'll be going through the mouse hole a second time there, getting another text skip as well. The hidden room is really good anyway because there's tons of chests with lots of money in it, so you can really get a lot going for that. Uh, in the laundry room here, there is a text skip that you can get using the sheets over by the door that you uh, uh, unfortunately didn't happen there, but that's okay. There are three other opportunities to see it. It's not the biggest text skip in the world, but it is one of the more difficult ones to do. So oh, you know Mikey's going for it. Oh, of course. Oh, I mean, that's like oh, his favorite shame. thing in the game. <laughs> yeah, Michael is, uh, oh, boy, Michael he is the tech zero. skip master. He's yeah. the one who popularized that strat, and he loves it dearly. Yes. It's his favorite strat in the game, I guarantee it. Can you give us your best Michael 2 impressions, Gazi? Ooh. <laughs> Laundry boo tech skip. That was How great. Was that? Brilliant. That was Thank wonderful. You. Thank I you. love it. <laughs> So, the next ghost that they're gonna get is uh, Melody Pianissima, and she plays the piano. And there Excuse are two me, songs that she. Oh, is it Pianissima? I thought it was Pianissima. Wow. I don't know. I don't know my Luigi's Mansion ghosts. Unless I do, and you're wrong. In which case, wow, you don't know your Luigi. Back me up, chat. Google it. Yeah. <laughs> but only Google it if I'm right. 
<laughs> As I was saying, she can play two different songs on the piano. Uh, one, effectively they're the same length uh, once you get to the text boxes. However, one of the songs, the answer you have to choose, requires you to do a input on the control stick. So it's a few frames slower if you get a certain song over the other song. So that's a very important time save. So you can really notice in this room, um, as, as they're trying to get that key in that boot, there's some really interesting stuff you can do, sort of dragging the key towards the door to save movement time, or picking up the, the key before the boot so that you can then walk to the door without you know, being held back by the key. So yeah, based yeah, on what RNG you get, you, you manage this room completely differently. And now they're doing and lungs, then... so you have to suck up his food, and then he starts shooting fireballs at you. But you can go one However... room away without unloading him, so you just let him, you know, shoot all his fireballs and wear himself out. You just go and do kitchen while he's doing that. And then once you're done, you just go back in there, and if you time it right, he should be just about done throwing his fireballs as you're entering anyway, so you can pretty, pretty, up you can optimize it pretty well. There's also a lot of small technical things about the way this game works that you kind of want to familiarize yourself with when it comes to running this game effectively. Uh, for example, rooms won't unload unless you go two rooms away. So, for example, with Lux, you can go to the room next to him and then he'll still be doing his thing. Uh, Luigi walks slower if you're using the vacuum than if you're not, but if you're using an element, he still walks at his normal speed. So there's so many different little things you have to keep in mind when it comes to optimizing your routes and your movement. Yeah, absolutely. And and something that you just saw is that they all uh, put out the fire on the door to the boneyard there, and then they walk away. And the reason that they do that is because you have to wait like six seconds or something after you get rid of that fire before you can go through the door. So uh, they, they make sure to do that before they actually even need to go through it. Yeah, for sure. And we're coming up to uh, one of the best ghosts in the game, the... Uh the uh, the graveyard with bogmire so that's something to keep in mind uh also the uh the plant in the boneyard has to be watered for 100 percent and you have to water it four times throughout the game uh you have to water it once in uh, each area times. is it three times it's oh, not it's an area times, one you can't get here yeah wow i'm not really right uh three times throughout the game uh once in each area starting at area two of course and if you miss it once, then you don't get the big monetary reward for getting it all three times. Now, I haven't been paying too much attention to this, but you can actually see that Michael has gotten a pearl dupe already. He has eight large pearls, and he's only gotten seven of the portrait ghosts. Um, yeah, I don't know if any so... other runners have gotten pearl dupes yet, but I wanted to point that out because those are hard to do. Basically, you have to collect the pearl with both the vacuum and Luigi's hitbox on the same frame. So you do that by uh, pulling out the vacuum with what's called a vacuum cancel. You shoot a bit of element and then switch to the vacuum very quickly. And it comes out instantly when you do that, which lets you walk into the pearl as you pull out the vacuum and you collect it twice. So really, really hard trick to do, but you can go for it on most of the large pearls and it doesn't cost much time. So that's something yeah, that, that's pretty important. you do a vacuum important. cancel, I don't think it costs any time to do, so it's not even like an issue if you just get a quick vacuum cancel in whilst you're amongst a large cluster of pearls. So we've got Bogmire here, he is the Area 2 boss. And you basically just hit him with one of those shadows and then suck him up at this level of play you want to see a one cycle here if you don't one cycle it's shameful yeah absolutely if you don't one cycle then you get kicked out of the, the race <laughs> <laughs> yeah bogmar is actually quite difficult to uh to get good at however once you get good at it and, and you're like a high level runner you expect to get it every single time yeah for sure bogmar is not really any different to any other board for ghost he just has a really strong pull And here we are, watching the cutscene again. Never thought I'd see you all again. Hello, 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 and hello. Mm -hmm. 
So now we are heading into area three after this. And area three is much longer than the first two areas are. And then area four is even longer than that by quite a bit. Uh, we're, we're about mm -hmm. like is, uh... a quarter of the way through the run, about. Yeah, we're uh, we're two areas in, but area four. Area three is definitely the biggest chunk of like Luigi's Mansion because area four, it's very long, but it's very long due to arbitrary padding and walking around, and not so much due to actual substance, in my opinion. Damn. Yeah. Calling out. Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Reggie fils -Aimé. Yeah, it's your fault. You, subjectively. Oh, actually, he retired. No, no, no. I respect him. Um, this is all Miyamoto's fault. Yeah, Shigeru Miyamoto deliberately padded out Area 4 to make speedrunners have a harder time. So here we get a cutscene. We see Mario in a painting. Oh no, we gotta go save him. And then we just walk away. Yeah, well, he found Mario. He's done. You'll see him again in like an hour. Yeah, well, maybe a little bit less than that. A little bit less if you have faith in the runners. Yeah, well, I do. <laughs> you think I don't have faith in my friends? Alright, anyway, uh, they're collecting this <laughs> key, and then they're going to go grab a letter that is in a birdhouse. As letters often are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, where else would you yeah. put them? It's well, not yeah. a mailbox, it's a birdhouse. the bird's gonna read them. No birds, though. Just flying fish. Which is the yeah, actual canon right. name of those ghosts <laughs> flying around. Yeah, so it's a fish house if you think about it. So here's another one of those optional speedy spirits. This one gives you an entire ruby, which is worth one million gold. It's like the same as a large pearl. So a lot of runners will go for that one. I think probably all these runners will be getting that one. They're currently doing Biff Atlas, who requires you to punch him three times with his own punching bags. So while they're doing that, the runners will on the treadmill to get three, which will allow them to enter between the two and three holders without having to go all courtyard every time. So that's the little optimization there. And then they get Biff, no problem. Get his chest and then get his boot. Yeah, so any of these optional portrait ghosts will give you a silver diamond in their chest. And those are worth, I believe, two million gold. So those are pretty nice. Yeah. Silver diamonds, they're, they're very special. And then uh, any of the required portrait ghosts are going to give you a key that you need to progress. Yeah, absolutely. Uh... There is a door on fire above those stairs, but you can actually launch your water through the stairs to get to the door. So you have to wait for it to be extinguished and wait for the entirety of the animation to finish before you get there. Oh, I, I think Fi Fight might have just lost that boo, huh? Ah, that's yeah. that's pretty unfortunate. That's a bad boo to lose. I think so it yeah, he's gonna go back for that one game. after he's done in the uh, in the second floor here. The uh, the room we're currently in now is called the tea room, and it is uh, the room where the ice medallion is. This room actually has uh, two potential golden mouse spawns in it, I believe. Uh, yeah, it, it has an RNG mouse, which will just spawn uh, one out of five times that you load the room. And then it also has a cheese mouse, which you, you scan the cheese and, and you get a golden mouse. Yes, and uh, neither of those are really all that special for 100%. In fact, most of the golden mice don't really help you out much, so most of those will just ignore them. Yeah, there's a few Some of them that are worth it. getting if they spawn, but for the most part, you actually just don't want to collect them, even if they're right next to you. Yeah, that's one thing you often see with, like, beginner 100% runners, is they'll grab the golden mouse just because it's there. But honestly, that really isn't worth it. 
Yeah, especially sealed room mouse is, is notorious because it causes a ton of lag because it gives you just a, <laughs> an amazing amount of coins and almost nothing else. Yeah, and, and coins are really and, not that special. Yeah, it, it's almost no money. It's really, really laggy and it's just... You know, so many runners get baited into catching it because it spawns right next to your foot. And um, one thing about Luigi's Mansion is that the game lags pretty hard in quite a few rooms. Yeah, for the most part it runs at a steady frame rate, but then there's a few rooms that the game just cannot handle. And uh, it's pretty noticeable. The one that uh, most people remember is the armory room, which you'll be seeing in area 4, that has some pretty substantial lag, and there's also a boo in there that requires perfect manipulation to be able to one cycle effectively. So that's uh, something that tends to cause people quite a bit of struggle when they're starting up. However, that's not for quite a ways away, and we're currently only in the Astral Hall, which is the room where you summon spirits using your country green altar. Mmm, satanic imagery. And then, yeah, well, what is this? This is like occultism in my video game. I think we should boycott this this video game. Because Rated it's not, E for uh, everyone. Yeah, did you hear that? Nintendo thinks the occult is for everyone. There's no other way to interpret that. And then, uh, next we're gonna head into Moonshot, where you blow up the moon. But it's not the moon, the moon. It's the moon... question mark? Yeah, it's uh, it's also inside the middle of the mansion. Yeah, so it's like the the smaller like kind of the moon, but it's not the real moon. You do see the moon later in the game. The the real moon is still there. Across. Not to mention, there's also uh, there's also half a moon, which is where Mario Star is landed on. So, and that's there no matter where the moons are. So there's three moons in this mansion. Do ghosts have their own moon? Yeah. That's what the, the, the planet that ghosts come from have that three moons. explains it. Didn't they teach you anything in school? <laughs> My school was Luigi's Mansion. That's how I learned so much about moons. So let's talk about Mario's items and why they're even important to get in the first place. Right, so there's, there's five Mario items in the game, and you have to collect them to give them to Clairvoya, who is a fortune teller. And she'll just tell you for Your over fortune. a minute of mashing all about the lore of the video game. It's just exposition central, and uh, that was basically the way that they formatted the plot because it's it's mostly an adventure game so you don't really figure out what's going on through dialogue you just talk to clairvoya for a really long time yeah i mean the game kind of plays out similarly to those point and click escape from the room kind of games uh so a lot of it is expecting you to just sort of wander around and figure it out and then when you find a Mario item, you're expected to rush back over to Clairvoya to get some exposition. But in speedruns, we kind of do it all in one big go. Yeah, so right now they're doing projection room, and, and these are some invisible grabber ghosts, which you can only see their shadows on the projector screen. Yeah, Which is and kind you're gonna cool. ignore the, the fact that they beautiful. have shadows. One thing I didn't know uh, about the Japanese version is that the uh, the flashlight, whether it's on or off, actually dictates whether or not you can even see shadows. So you see Fi Fi is now going and uh, picking up that boot that you lost yes. earlier in the run. Which is unfortunate, that's a huge chunk of time for him that he's gonna unfortunately have lost there. But that's alright. He did put it, uh, he did get it in a decent place in the run. He didn't immediately rush in there to get it right after losing the boot or anything, which would have been a bigger time loss. Our boy knows his backups. Mm -hmm. A very well-researched yeah. man. 
Almost like he planned it. So this is Slim Bangshot that they're doing, and he is just the worst. Uh, yes, he, absolutely. He breaks the balls with his Q or whatever, and, and they go in random directions. You need to hit him with all three of them. And if they hit one of the pockets on the table, or they get stuck in a corner, either one will cause the ball to despawn. And you have to wait for him to walk all the way around the table again. And, and break again, which takes 25 seconds minimum. And sometimes it's completely unavoidable. He's a great ghost. I love him. He's my second favorite. We're gonna use the mirror in Slim Bang Shot's room to get back to the main room, the foyer. And then we're gonna go up into the Area 1 hallway where they will be getting some booze that they left behind. And then continue on their way towards uh, the rest of the rooms in that hallway. Yeah, so, so in this category they do need... Play. In this category they do need to eventually get all 50 booze. So they're gonna have to clean up all the booze that they haven't caught yet. And it works out pretty well because they need 20 boos for boo losses anyways. In order to enter the fight, you have to have 20 boos. Um, and you wind up with a few more than that in this route. You sure do. And then for King Boo at the very end, you need 40, but obviously this is 100%, so you should have them all by then. We're currently uh, going to do the twins now. The twins play a game where they hide in boxes. You have to find them. Uh, the boxes that they can hide in, they're random, random positions that they can have in the boxes that they can choose from. Uh, and you're sort of meant to use your vacuum on the boxes to see if it shakes. And if it shakes, then there's the ghost in there. And that's told to you through a book inside Neville's room that you're meant to have found by exploration. But, uh, obviously, as speedrunners, we don't need to explore, we sort of know everything anyway. Yeah, so a lot of people don't really find that, and, you know, you hear stories all the time of people who, as kids, would just, uh, randomly check boxes until they won, which Absolutely. takes a lot of time. That was me as a kid. We just mentioned it's an exploration heavy game. You sort of expect it to hit every single object in every single room. Yeah, and you can actually scan all the objects with the Game Boy Horror and uh, Luigi will give you like a little tidbit about it or how he feels. Some weird Yeah, he gives you Luigi commentary about every single object in the game. Yeah, a lot of them are repeats though. Yeah, yeah. But it's still fun to do. You're coming up into uh, Lydia's room where there is a text skip that you can get on her sheet. Pretty much any sheet that you can pull off, uh, you can use for a text skip. And there are several throughout the mansion that we we'll, uh, utilize in this run. Um, several also that we don't utilize in the run. Uh, and generally you catch a boo and then you suck up the sheet. And the animation of getting the sheet overrides the animation of having caught the boo. So you skip having to text or anything. Yep, so now you can see Blue Hits is already at Clairvoya. He's doing his mashing segment. He's pressing the A button and then the B button uh, in an alternating pattern for approximately uh, 90 seconds. A little bit less than that. It's just over a minute. Yeah. Now we've got three people doing it. That's a real party. Wow. This is one of my favorite parties. In fact, I organized pressing the A and B button together. I'm sure uh, Fire Dragon in time will uh, arrive fashionably late to the party as well. Yeah, so right after this, 
they're going to be going and watering the plant again. And uh, that's the, the Area 3 watering the plant. And then Area 4, they'll go pretty much just a few minutes after they water it here. They're going to be going right back in Area 4 and collecting a golden diamond, which is worth 20 million. Yes, and there are two of them that you can get in the game. Um, one of them for getting the plant, and the other one you get for catching all 50 boosts. Yeah, so those two things combined give you, like, the majority of the money that you need for the run. Um, the rest of it you just get along the way from bills and gems and pearls. Yeah. Uh, also, as they're on their way to get the plant watered, they will hopefully be getting ice from the fridge. Uh, what the runners used to do is they used to go into the tea room and get ice from the ice bucket in the tea room, but, uh, eventually realized you could just get it as you're walking in and out of the kitchen, and so hopefully we'll be doing it that way. Yeah, see, uh, they, they used to get the plant right at the beginning of Area 2, and nobody really considered that you could move the plant back and, and use it as a way to get ice faster, and that was actually something that I found. I'm quite nice. proud of it. You know, I'm proud of you too, Skazi. You're optimizing this game in small chunks at a time. Skazi also found the, uh, the scare skip, which is opt uh, utilized quite often in the run as well. I sure did. Now, Lugsboo that some of these runners are getting right now can be really tricky. So you see they're very careful about how they drag him. Um, yeah, it's absolutely. really easy to lose that boo, and since the room is so wide, but it's it's very, very narrow uh, the other way, he can just back up a little bit and be through the wall, and there's, you know, it, it's really, really uh, important to avoid letting him do that. <laughs> and one thing about Luigi's Mansion that I've noticed is... Uh... Depth perception doesn't really exist in this game, so it's really hard to know how far away, or I suppose, how far along the, uh, the Z-axis a ghost can be. Yeah, so the way that this game works is that the camera is always in a set position and it moves left and right with you. But it's basically supposed to be like a dollhouse, is, is the idea. It's like a diagram. Yeah, that was actually how they proposed the idea for this game, I believe, to the uh, Nintendo Corporation, was uh, the use of a dollhouse. Although there is a fourth wall that is fully rendered and textured in every room in the mansion, you just almost never see it. Yeah, so when you pull out the, uh, the camera on the Game Boy Horror, you can see the... Uh... The front facing wall and you actually use that several times throughout the run because there's a few rooms that have mirrors on that wall which you can warp with uh the safari That's room that they're cool. in right now is actually one of them yeah and well, they will be using that mirror uh after they are in area four to uh help them on their way through the blackout portion of the game but before we get there they have to finish up the safari room, and then they're on their way to Blossus, who is the Area 3 boss. Yeah, so Blossus is quite difficult to do consistently. You have to freeze and then catch 15 boos. And so what they're going to do is sort of back up and let the boos cluster together, and then try and shoot ice and hit as many as they possibly can in one shot because the booze will run away from the ice if you spray it. And so that they'll spread out like crazy, and it's very hard to get, you know, more than a couple of them in a, in a cycle. So ideally, you're going to see everyone one cycle here, but things can go very awry. You can wind up losing, you know, a minute to this fight if you, Absolutely. If you make some mistakes. Absolutely. And uh, there's so many arbitrary reasons that this can go wrong, too, from ice spawning out of bounds to... Uh, one of the boos deciding to get stuck on the sculpture and not come along with the rest of the group. There, there are so many things that are just really hard, hard to predict happening. Blue hits actually not hitting as many as he would like to there. He's going to have a difficult time backing this up, but he's... He's got it. There you go. He's got the one cycle. Great. Very good so backup. One cycle. Did the handle it pretty well. 
HD is uh, doing a long cycle as well. I believe his long cycle is actually quite a bit faster. Uh, Michael as well. Michael having a very fast boot losses, yeah. Yeah. These runners are actually really close to each other in terms of time now because of that. And 5-5 five is keeping up. Yeah, for I sure. stand our boy. Let's hope he won cycles. <laughs> we all stand him. I've seen so many Fire Fight emotes in the chat. I'm pretty sure everyone stands our boy Fire Fight. The thing about uh, Blossus as well is he has three different stages that he can form in depending on how many of the ghosts you name. Uh, so the first one where there's uh, this many um, is the one that will hopefully be able to get the one side. Uh, if you have four or less remaining, then he is a really small boo, and he is very aggressive, and his ghost will charge at you, so it's really easy to handle that as well. But there's the form in between those, where he's not the biggest form, not the smallest form, and in that one, the ghosts won't charge you almost at all, but they'll also avoid your ice like the plague, and waste a lot of your time. So yeah, I do it's, it's, it's extremely it's hard. It's extremely hard to yeah. even really hit any of the boos during the medium phase AI. You basically are just trying to pick off one at a time, if that. Yeah, it's really annoying, and ideally the runners will one cycle him, but if they can't, then they desperately want to get, you know, as many as they can to avoid having to deal with the second uh, phase of the losses. So now they're heading into the, uh, the plant, they're going to grab that golden diamond. And then they're going to go and do blackout, which is yes. how Area 4 starts out. You basically lose power and you have to go and flip the breaker after beating Grimly. And uh, the only hint that you get for that is that Uncle Grimly likes mirrors. So uh, obviously he's in the mirror room, right? No, no, he sure is not. He is in the no, wardrobe he's in the room. Wardrobe. <laughs> exactly he also isn't in the room. Mirrors. He also isn't in the room with the biggest mirror in the game, which is uh, which is the pool hall. Right, right. So, uh, so that's a hint that means nothing. It literally, if there's a mirror in there, you make that room. Of course, most rooms have a mirror in them. I guess they expected you to systematically go through Area 1's rooms first, and then stumble upon him in the wardrobe. I'm not too sure. I think that they probably wanted you to, uh, to sort of be wandering around the mansion and encountering all the Blackout ghosts, because during Blackout, there's actually... Every single room in the game has a unique pattern of ghosts that's only there during the Blackout. Yeah. And, uh, we'll be skipping almost all of them. Yeah, so the nice thing about it is if you're facing towards where a ghost is about to spawn, they won't be able to spawn. So you can just look at the spawn points as you're moving around the mansion, and you won't get scared by the ghosts appearing. So yeah. you'll notice they're all uh, lot, sort of uh... doing this sidestep thing where, where they point away from the direction they're walking. That's the reason for that. Yeah, you'll see it when they're in the hallways a lot too keeping their flashlight pointed at the spawn points of the ghosts, because ghosts won't spawn if you're looking at the spawn points. Very, uh, very good way to keep yourself from getting scared. Now, Blue Hits has his special strat, Pythagoras Skip, which he messed up, and I'm sure he's very upset, but That's he okay. came up he with that where you can walk through the middle of the room <laughs> using a scare skip. Grimley's heart is actually completely RNG dependent on whether or when he shows it. Um, he can show his heart immediately while you're walking to the door because he spawns before you get there, as you saw with blue hits. Or he can show his heart infinity times afterwards because there's no hard limits on how long you have to wait. Yeah, so the longest recorded Grimley, I believe, is 50-something seconds. 
Yes, I don't know the specifics, but it is around 50 seconds. I, I want to um, say it's 56, it might be 54, somewhere in there. But yeah, he can show his heart at any time. Uh, and that literally is at any time. Yeah, it, it's very rare that he goes over like 8 seconds though. Uh, it usually isn't a big deal. Now they're in the breaker room, where they will be uh, attempting the breaker room one cycle. All oh, these runners should have no problem getting it. Although it is one of the hardest ghosts to, uh, to one cycle. Yeah, so the thing about this is that when you're doing the R pumps on the boos, which is how they keep them in place, uh, in between each pump the boo will make a cackling sound, right? And after 15 of those cackling sounds, they'll start heading towards a wall. They'll just pick a wall and they'll lean through it, and you can't keep them in place anymore. And so, you do 10 HP for cackle, you get 150 HP. But that boo has 200 HP. So you have to drag him backwards as you're doing the pumps to get extra distance between him and the wall. So that as he's heading towards the wall, you can do the extra 50 damage. It's very, very difficult. And uh, Blue Heads didn't get it, so he should... He will hopefully have an opportunity to get him as he's leaving here if he checks the break room again. But unfortunately, Breaker Boo is not in there. Uh, sometimes he can go back in there. Usually he likes to run off into the uh, pipe room. Yeah, so this is another one of those situations where you don't want to immediately go get that Boo. You actually can't even. Uh, they're just going to walk away and get him after they do the attic. Yep. Uh, so I wasn't watching the other runners, but... We will see if Fi Fi gets break and boo one cycle. He does not as well. So uh that's alright. Uh it looks like HD got it though. Good. That puts HD in a little bit of a lead. I wanna say mm, what is it like six to eight seconds inherently from getting break and boo one cycle. Really depends on the situation in this category. Um, yeah, I suppose so. It's hard to really put a number on it. It's not as, as clear-cut as it's... No Out of Bounds because you actually get Pipe Boo. Yeah, for sure. Generally, though, you want to get the Boo in one cycle. Yeah, yeah, it does help to uh, do the Yeah, it, it helps to go fast. <laughs> Surprisingly, going fast is ideal for speedrunning. Oh, blue hits missing that oh, double on the skeleton. Missing that double. Didn't look like he was gonna miss it, so uh, that caught me by surprise. Oh, yeah. Michael getting the double, uh, getting it on the top part of the room. Yeah, it's a little bit of a different strat that he goes for. It works pretty nicely, though. Yep, yeah. he got the double, so I you know, can't complain. Now, Toy Soldiers, you can go risky on this and do a double. Um, we'll see if any of the runners are going for that, if they're feeling frisky. The thing about it is, if you break off, obviously you don't get the large pearl from the blue one. Uh, the blue one always has the pearls. So, it's a pretty big gamble for the money pace, going for the double. So Michael's doing going it. For the double, but didn't get it. Michael is getting the double, but will he successfully continue it? He sure does. Yes, what a legend. Will. Michael is uh, really pulling out all of the tricks up his sleeve today. So you notice he has 17 large pearls. HD's sitting at 15, so even though uh, HD has that extra boo, there's a little bit of a question of who's actually ahead here. HD might yeah, have to get sure, some extra money. Uh, and if Michael considers himself above the expected money amount, he can always let some stuff go and save some time that way. Oh jeez. Michael having some real trouble with these ghosts. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Yeah, that, that was a huge time loss. Yeah. So 
So these attic boos are extremely difficult. You notice that this guy has 300 HP. The one below him also has 300 HP. So you want to get these guys in two cycles. Um, and they're going to do it in a very specific order. So they'll do telephone room boo when they're coming back into the clockwork room. Because after you're done with the attic, you fall down the chimney on the roof. So you basically clear all of the attic and then you go right back up to the roof. Yep, and uh, Luke is giving me true cycle on the first of the attic boos, so that's always really good. He's on his way towards the armory now, the room I mentioned earlier, so uh, this room's fun. There are uh, a couple of ways you can handle the ghosts. Uh, I believe Lucas will likely go for the triple strat if he uh, doesn't mess up any further than that. Uh, there's a quad you can go for as well. Lewis actually getting that chest money too as well. That's interesting to me. Um, I wonder if he's a little bit nervous about his money pace. Or if he just goes for that regularly, I'm not sure. I haven't seen him do 100 percent enough to know. He was gonna be triple pretty uh, pretty easily there, no real issues. He did accidentally uh have some trouble on the uh, garbage can ghost, but he handled it really well. So with this armory boo, it's actually um, a, a very, very aggressive boo. So it'll try and attack you consistently. So that if he spawns on the other side of those statues from you, you can just face away from him and uh, bait him into swooping towards you and do the one cycle that way. Yep, generally uh, a lot of the boos are kind of aggressive and they like to thrust themselves towards you. And you can use that to your advantage. Uh, armor with 150 HP means you can't get any double cackles. Um, if you do, you have to hope you can walk him along the path to get that damage back. And now, for the Jarvis, Jarvis minigame... One of the best ghosts. For the Jarvis minigame, you have to just freeze him seven times. And if you miss it all, then you lose, like, over a minute. Yeah, there's seven... He'll show up seven times, and you have to freeze him seven times. So, you, you know, it's not hard to do, it's just always annoyed me that you can't mess up once. Yeah, it's it's completely unforgiving, but it's not difficult in the slightest. Yeah, like it's allowed to be unforgiving, it's, but it's still annoying. And the boo in this room is one of the very few boos that is, like, possible to one cycle in an RTA setting that pretty much nobody goes for the one cycle because it's just not worth it because if he leaves through the right wall you lose an ungodly amount of time um yeah and absolutely the one cycle only saves i don't know probably five seconds or something and it's also really stupidly difficult to even get at all anyway because he has a uh, 200 hp so Going for it would be ridiculous and not viable at all. I can do it. I'm epic. I'm sure you can do it. But <laughs> you can do anything, Stasi. <laughs> so yeah, Bluehead's actually having a bit of trouble with that boo. It wound up going back into Jarvis's room. You have to get him through the armor statues because this boo does not uh, swoop at you. He's very, very chill. So... That's yeah. actually a, a very really bad cool. thing. He's not very cool. He's just really cool. <laughs> uh, oh, funny stuff, Lacey. <laughs> honestly, I'm really bringing it today. Have you ever heard such comedic genius? It's midnight where I am, so I'm going to use that as my excuse. Alright, so like I said, coming back around to go to the, uh, the roof and they're getting the telephone room to cycle, hopefully. Blue Hits is yeah. messing that up, though. That might actually put HD in the lead. I believe he's in the lead yeah. now. How about Look that? that. HD is... He's doing really well. <laughs> it's giving a premature round of applause. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's already out of there. He's done with the attic. So, uh, to recap, to get 100%, you have to, um, complete the game with all 50 boos, 100 million gold, and, uh, I guess, all the portraits, uh, 
And that constitutes 100% completion. So the runners are trying to go fast and also achieve all of those goals in the process. HD is grabbing the shameful emerald from sealed room, which is really slow. I guess he's scared of his money. He days. gets in the lead one tiny bit, and he thinks he has the uh, audacity to be that callous and go for <laughs> stupid slow gems. <laughs> Honestly, uh, his cockiness will be his downfall, in my opinion. I don't think he's being cocky, actually. I, I believe he's genuinely scared of his money pace, because like I was pointing out earlier, he's down some pearls. That's true. He should, uh, go for some more pearl dupes. I understand in this race setting, especially when he's in the lead, it's definitely worth, uh, you know, being safe on that money, because relying on pearl dupes yeah. is, is a risky idea. And in a race setting, too, he, you know, can you go for some safety because... If the other runners don't, they might not get the money, and then even if they beat him in time, they might not- So it is worth being a bit safer. You know, racing is a- it's a- it's a mind game, you sort of want to psych out your opponent. Think that, oh, he's going for slow gems, so I can be a bit riskier to take the lead, but lo and behold, that was the plan all along. So Piperum has some different strats for it. You see HD getting that triple. Uh, I believe Blue Hits here is going to freeze the ghosts instead. So he's going to sort of multitask and and turn the valve as he's uh, freezing these ghosts. So it's, it's a little bit weird trying to compare the speed of those strats, but the one that Blue Hits is doing is definitely faster overall. Yeah, for sure. Quite I like the pipe boo though, though because uh, the pipe boo is really, really slow, and you can one cycle him despite having so much HP. Yeah, so pipe boo has 300 HP, and you can just walk him back and forth between the two walls because when you get in between him and the wall, and you pump, he'll turn around and he'll try to go out the other wall. And since he's so slow, you can just drain all 300 HP and still have plenty of cackles left over if you do it well. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the uh, easier one cycles, funnily enough. And of course, uh, I believe all of these ones, uh, except for HD, has a, uh, a an extra boo they have to get in the pipe room as well. Yeah, so this is where breaker boo goes when you don't one cycle him usually. HD is already on a Weston. The, uh, the ghost trapped in the ice. Yeah, so Weston's a very difficult one cycle, and you you really want his large pearl, so in 100%, you gotta be very careful with that suck up. HD did a great job with it, that was very fast. Yeah, for sure, HD's killing it today. He's uh, bringing his A game, I have to say. But yeah, since the, the floor is made of ice, actually, when, when Weston starts dragging you around, it's very, very hard to actually track him properly, and then he'll break off pretty easily. So you want to either not let him move at all, or track super accurately, one or the other. Let's do with a uh, really nice one cycle on Weston Blue as well. And yeah, this is another one of those moves that's pretty hard to one cycle. Blue, it's actually missing it there. Unfortunately. As if on cue. HD will be going up towards uh, the sitting room and uh, Sue P's room now. The uh, sitting room uh, is a room that has you use your fire and then also your water. So that's uh, an interesting quirk about that room. And uh, then Supi 
uh, one of the more interesting portrait ghosts in my opinion. Uh, one of the more genuinely unnerving ones uh, for me playing casually as well. The, uh, the strat with her, she kind of just want to spill water on her. When you wake her up, you know how it is. Yeah, and Supi is another one where it's pretty difficult to get that large pearl. Like, right at the end of the run here, you have the gauntlet of trying to get the large pearl from Weston and <laughs> Supi. Because um, you need the, really those, that's a, 2 million testing. gold right there. And both of those one cycles are very difficult. But, uh, yeah, for these, these fasties, they actually have no problem getting them. The, uh, the booze in Supi's room and Anity's sitting room are also two booze that you can get a, a booze on very easily. Do you know who found that? Uh, based on the smugness of the way you said it, I'm gonna <laughs> say you did. <laughs> you know it. Yeah. I, I know you, Skazi. I can tell when you wanna toot your own horn a little bit. So yeah, after this, they're heading up to Van Gore. And Van Gore is basically a, a trial where you get a triple on most of the different types of ghosts. Just in a row, you get a triple, a triple, a triple, a triple. And each one, you have to do like a little bit of a different strat for them based on what type of ghost it is. So it's it's really, really detailed trying to learn the fast strats there. Yeah, it absolutely. super impressive, honestly. So yeah, the ghosts are going to come out of these paintings and you have to set up before the ghosts even spawn so that you're in position to catch them and then do like yeah, sort of different movement on each triple. And like if you get the first triple down, then in my opinion, it's pretty easy to go from that to all the other triples. And then if you mess up the first triple, I often have a, a difficult time repositioning myself in time. But we'll see how well these runners do. It's keep doing the first triple, no problem. Yeah, so you can see he's he's going for very risky strats here. He's actually playing it super fast. As he does. Yeah, you gotta love yeah, it. Yeah, the grand triple is one that I have a hard time with. Taking it a little bit the, safe uh, on that one, but yeah. it, those grabbers are the hardest triple. They really are. You can do them really quickly and just stun them instantaneously, but that's absurdly difficult compared to what, the way he did it. Yeah. And now with these hanging ghosts, because they're all, all the way up on the ceiling, getting the triple is pretty unreasonable, because they also drop bombs down, so if you're standing under them, you get hit. So usually runners will just burn them. But if you clear a wave of ghosts with an element, it actually takes longer for the wave to end by like, I think two seconds or so. So the optimal strat is to burn two of them and then catch the last one, but it's so unbelievably risky that you don't really see people go for it. Yeah, and I mean, compared to how easy it is to just burn them all anyway. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so definitely one of those like super everything. swaggy strats though. I, like, if I'm on a dead run, I always go for it, just because it's so fun to get it. Yeah, you gotta go for it every time. Yeah, that's that's how you to impress the uh, viewers. Van Gore Boo is a boo that is very easy to recycle because he only has two places he can ever go to, which is the hallway and the Van Gore. He also will drop the, uh, the, the gold diamond. So uh, hopefully he will be able to grab the diamond before he uh, he does not, which means he is unfortunately not going to be able to save and quit. So HD will have to walk into the safari room and use the mirror to get back into the foyer. Because, yeah, it's about uh, three seconds slower of movement to use the mirror. Yeah, 
You can grab the diamond as you're catching the boo and then do a saving clip, but uh, yeah. The way that that works, you, it, you have to be backing into a wall because as the gem comes out of your vacuum, it has momentum based on how you're moving. So if you're backing into a wall, then it, it comes towards you because you're, you're not actually moving backwards, but it gets backwards momentum. So that's, that's the way that Michael you get it to land actually, on top of you. And we will see uh, if Blue hits follow suit. He's been having some difficulty with these uh, blues lately. So Michael's definitely feeling good about his money count. Uh, he has, I believe, 22 pearls or something. He got quite a few problems. <laughs> Uh, a, there, there are 19 in the game normally, if you get every single one cycle. HD seems uh, very unsure about his money count as well, but... Yeah, oh, HD's please. grabbing culture money. So that's that's about like uh, 1.5 million that you can grab there in just a few seconds, but most runners will sort of keep that as a backup. So th they don't route yeah. that money in on purpose, so that if they're behind on money, they can grab that instead. Uh... HD is uh, in the lead in terms of speed, though, so if he has the right money, he is very likely the uh, winner of this race. But, of course, that all depends on how well the uh, King Boos go. Yeah, so you want to see a two cycle here. And King Boo has 500 HP, so if you see him below <sighs> 250, that's a good sign. But... It's a pretty difficult two cycle to do consistently, and you, you, you hate to see it, but people do choke it, you know, on world record paces and stuff. It's it's right at the yeah, end of the line. Yeah, for runs. sure. The nerves really can get you. And I mean, King Boo two cycles. It's one of those things that a runner will get it until it's important that they do, and then that the amount of a. Uh, important PBs that so many runners have lost due to choking King Boo, despite having no difficulty getting him every run previously, is very, very common. HD letting him go at 265. Uh, he, he has been able to get back. him in two cycles. Uh, with more HP, so he might be doing that deliberately for speed, however... I, sure. I really doubt it. I don't think that he would be going for that for speed. It just seemed like he let him go deliberately. No, I think he missed the R pump. Oh. Oh, well, well, he missed the Ooh. two cycle, too. <laughs> Getting hit by ice there, he's gonna have to do a slow three cycle. If King Boo is below 200 HP, then you have to wait for Bowser to run around the field with his head upside down. That wastes a bunch of time. It sure does. Oh, Michael! Michael is, uh, the if he has the money, Michael just won. Two. Yep, we'll see. That is uh, what we were just talking about with King and there's HD. causing runners to choke. Getting a really good screenshot with the explosion. Alright, when's <laughs> time? Uh, well, there's time Lewis. is almost up. Uh, we just have to wait until Fire Dragon finishes up. Oh, uh, time already uh, happened. Three of the four we're supposed to call that out. <laughs> time yes, is on the crown. Oh, sorry. the crown. Okay, okay. oh my god. Uh, Michael got a 112.02, if you wanted to know specifically. <laughs> um. <laughs> I think I think HD was second, and then Blue Hits was third? Yeah, yes. yeah, okay. yeah. Don't worry, you haven't... You haven't gotten the order wrong, you're all right. <laughs> I was paying attention, I'm like, when do I, when do I click it, when do I click it? Oh, yeah, I and... see, that should have been relayed. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I was so just through and through uh, the most professional race you've ever seen. Luigi's Mansion community yeah, is always strong. We are the best. <laughs> if there's one thing that you should know about the Luigi's Mansion community is that we take our commentary very seriously. So let's see these money counts. That's that's important. You yes. don't want to get too excited right now because you don't know who won this race yet. Yeah, you know. 
Everything you thought you knew about Luigi's Mansion Spearing was wrong. Now for the ominous countdown. I bet they're gonna take their time. <laughs> of course, you gotta let it just play out. <laughs> if you don't hit A, then, then it plays out on its own very slowly, and of course that's what you gotta do. You know, keep Yeah, keep otherwise the you, know, you can't build your dramatic tension. It's like a, a, most of the European board games that you have, like tabletop. It's like, we're done, we've won! All right, everyone get out your calculator. <laughs> Yeah, Luigi's Mansion should have come with a calculator so you could calculate the money. Uh, HD getting the money, he would have won had he not messed up the uh, the two cycle there. Just rub it in, man. Get him. Get him. I will. <laughs> I'm gonna make his self esteem even lower than mine. Dude, Michael's not letting us know. He's just sitting on those portraits. He's not letting us know. Oh, Blue Hits did Blue not Hits, make uh, the money. Didn't get the money. Just barely, too. Holy moly. I know. Wow, that was close. It really was. Let's all uh, cry for blue hits. And Ooh, uh, Mikey. Michael with the money. Beautiful. Congrats to Michael too for winning the race. Now we just got to see what. Five the, uh, is. the number on the bottom is the highest amount that the file has ever gotten. Yeah, so the white number is the one that you're looking for. The white one at the bottom, and then the yellow one, you just ignore that. So, let's see if Fire Dragon has also achieved 100%. My boy, my boy, did you do it? We're all waiting here with anticipation. Gosh, I am quivering. Six rubies, that's what I like to see. All right. Oh, he's good. Oh, he's good. Five Five beats Blue Hits. Everyone make fun of Blue Hits. <laughs> he's world record holder and no out of bounds. It's okay. You can make fun of him. His ego's yeah. strong enough. He can handle it. World record holder. <laughs> All right. I was going to have some of the runners hop in, but it seems like they might not be available. So it might be just us, folks. Oh, no. It might be. Well, they. I think they're. I said to, to hop in, but I haven't seen anybody. Before. Uh, they can hop in if they want to. Get in here, they guys. When they were when they finished, that they could. Hop I know in. they're embarrassed, but come on <laughs> in. <laughs> Let's make it a party. Come on, how's it going, Mikey? Yeah, Michael's here. Michael, you won. <laughs> Michael can't hear us. This is exciting. Right, there we go. There we go. I hear Fabulous. you. Hey. There we go. Hey, the whole gang's here. The gang's, the whole gang's here. here. This is going to be mayhem <laughs> again. Congratulations, <laughs> everyone, on, on, on this. Uh, Michael, you won. You I, finished I, first. I was robbed. <laughs> <laughs> okay isn't, isn't lose, that just man, the way? You know? It's okay so, uh, to lose. Can, can we have a, a rematch? Yes, uh, right after this, sure. but not we'll broadcast. I have to oh. go to bed. Um, <laughs> it's only like 7 o'clock, you know? We can go all night. <laughs> Ain't that the way. Uh, do you have any shout-outs to, to the community or anything? Shout-out to me. Hello, there we go! Yes. Yeah. And done. There's it. Guys, <laughs> shout-out to, uh, sh shout to Skazi for uh, commentating this race. Sexy Ska. Shout out uh, to Lacey, uh, shout out to Five Five, shout out to Michael, shout out to <laughs> shout out to HD. Shout out to Smooth. All around and a beautiful woman with shout out to everyone. Uh, smooth. Shout out to Smooth. Yeah, shout out to Smooth. <laughs> shout smooth out to the legend. 
Yeah, you you all did. No, in all serious, serious note. Shouts to the gold diamond. Hell yeah, Thanks brother. Shout us to King Boo. <laughs> mm. Shout yeah. out to that three cycle by HD. I agree. Yeah, it was uh, beautiful. And uh, shout out to everyone who watched this race. Yes. Oh, you guys all agree. Everyone was wonderful. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you all so much for being here and celebrating the anniversary with us. It it means a lot to us, I think. And it was uh, a man, great show. And uh, to the two commentators, uh, Lacey and Skazi. Oh, no. You, oh, you we knew the whole time. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Oh, Shout out to six coins. <laughs> six coins. <laughs> 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 shout out. Oh. Shout out. Uh, Shout all out right. to GDQ for hosting this. You guys are great. Thank you for that. We appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for having the community. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, this this thereby ends the race. We hope you all enjoyed. Reminder that next month is Disability Awareness Month on GDQ. So if you'd like to submit a game um, for for speedrunning on this channel, you can exclamation point disability month in the chat and see exactly how to do that we would love to have you and thank you all for being here this has been a great race congratulations one more time to michael you killed it out there buddy and i tried uh, me cola that's that's how we do uh we're gonna pop it over to to rpg limit break which is also having an anniversary of fable fable one i believe uh hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time on gdq hotfix